the midterm elections now just around the corner. The Democratic National Committee is running on fumes. We want to talk about this because paperwork submitted by the Federal Election Commission tallied DNC fundraising efforts in 2017 to an estimated $66 million. That's nearly half of what the RNC's estimated $132.5 million haul is uh, coming up. So coming off of this weak fundraising showing, according to, the, uh, to NBC, the DNC CEO, Jess O'Connell, is reportedly out of the job after less than a year. Give us your take on what you see happening with regard to the fundraising part of the story, Governor. Well, I think we need to be very careful that we don't leave out a huge part of the story. And that is the candidates of the left, Democrats, socialists, whatever they are, they are not very much funded by the Democratic Party. They're these huge outside organizations. There was an announcement last week that uh, the public employee unions, Tom St uh, Steyer, the, the environmentalist, uh, the AFL-CIO had pledged $350 million just in campaigns to defeat Republican governors. So let's don't forget that so much of their money comes from Planned Parenthood or not through the party. The Republicans, a great deal more of our money actually is contributed by individuals to the party and the party dispenses it. Not, not so much with the Democrats. Haley, on that note, it's Dega McDowell, that there is money and there is enthusiasm for Democratic candidates out there. You have a Beto O'Rourke in Texas outraising Ted Cruz in the most recent three-month period. You have a Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee raising a more than $105 million last year, which I believe is a record for a non-election year. So, again, Nancy Pelosi might be sitting on her hands at the State of the Union address, but there is, there is definitely money willing to step up on the Democratic side to back up some of these candidates running in November. No question about that. And that was the point I was trying to make. Even right. if it doesn't come from a Democratic committee, party committee, there are these other organizations that are just pouring money into Democratic campaigns. Republicans were outspent in the last election. We'll be outspent in this election. But you could do, you know, Donald Trump was way outspent by Hillary Clinton. That's he true. Could, Great he, point. He could do that because he's president, now President Trump. But again, that's the personality of the individual. Don't the candidates at the, at the ground level in the Republican Party need to worry about what's happening right here, right now? Well, they do need to worry about being outspent or being outspent by a large margin. You know, in off-year elections like this year, the campaigns are much more localized. It's much more Congressman X versus Challenger Y. It's much more about their state, their yeah. district. The Democrats want to make the whole, everything about Donald Trump. Right. And, if and you don't like Donald Trump, you ought to vote against every Republican, right. even if it's the best senator, best House member you've ever had. But how successful is that going to be going into the 2018 election? I mean, it's all about resist, resist, resist. They don't have a message, Governor. I mean, what, you know, you, we know what the Republicans are going to run on, their tax plan and a better economy. Can the Dems win more seats come 2018 if their message is just resist the guy in the White House? It's much harder to, it's much harder to win if you don't give people something to vote for. There's yeah. no question about that. We want to ask but, you, yeah, go ahead. No, look, it's, it's a long way to these elections. The Republicans got a little bounce out of the last month, uh, the tax bill, and I guarantee they're going to get a little bounce out of the president's speech, which is really good. Uh, these are going to be competitive elections, but they will be more and more about the, the place where they are, the campaign, the state, the district, and less about the national situation than the than the Democrats want it want to believe. Yeah. The Republicans got to make it about the economy, so they have some sense. Mm -hmm. If we need to make it national too about the improvement in the economy, it's because of our policies. Mm. But they do tend to be get more localized the closer you get to election. So day. we want to ask you about this. We've been talking about this FISA memo all morning and the fact that Devin Nunes and Trey Gowdy have been doing such good work on this. But James, you mentioned a really good point. We got news this morning from Trey Gowdy. Yeah, I'm wondering, uh, Haley, what. What we should make of this uh, news that uh, Trey Gowdy is leaving Congress, he says he prefers uh, uh, being a lawyer, I guess, to a politician, but uh, how do you read it in terms of what does it mean for the fall? 
Well, we do have a number of retirements, and a, and a lot of those retirements are among very senior people, uh, many of whom are committee chairs who are term limited. Uh, I think the idea of term limited committee chairs, particularly in the House, is a bad idea because I think it costs you good members. Uh, that's but that's, what's that's here. not for me to decide. That's what's happening here, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. But but Trey is uh, Trey's only been there about eight years. Mm. I just think he's somebody that has been a prosecutor, been in the justice system, and thinks it accomplishes a whole lot more, a whole lot faster than Congress does. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Governor Haley Barber, it's always a pleasure, sir. Thanks so much for spending the time with us this morning. Great. Thank we'll, you. Thank you. We will see you soon. Haley Barber there coming.